So hi, welcome to the Gnarlies Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... And I am Tanner from In Flames. And we're asking some questions today about their upcoming album, Foregone. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? It's been awesome. It's, it feels good to like be promoting and a part of um, a record that I'm fully involved in. It's, it's my first record that I did all the music or, you know, all the songs, all the drums um, for the album. The last couple things that we've released have kind of been a part of it. You know what I mean? But it's, it's nice to um, have myself on all these songs. And, and, you know, it seems like people are excited. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Didn't get to hear the full record, but these singles are smacking so hard. Oh, they're insane. Yeah. So is there any meaning? Thank you so much. Album? Should I play a new song for us right now? <laughs> Will you get in trouble? Yes, I'm kidding. I would not. <laughs> oh, damn it. Okay, I, I got excited for a sec. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. Uh, is I'm there sorry, any... I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art? Um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, the theme of the record, uh, it's not my theme. It's not my place in a sense. It's it's, it's definitely Anders is the mastermind behind all of it, but it's just... um. From what I've gathered from what he said, um, the record is a response from COVID times and how, and I'm trying to quote him about how, you know, we're all coming back from this weird time in life and he was hoping that it would be a more joyous rebirth in a sense of like okay we're all back now but you know he he feels as if it's more hostile and um some more negative um generally whether however you want to interpret that but mostly like just the the vibe of where the world is right now yeah um and that was you know good fuel for a heavy record Mm -hmm. absolutely um so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album yeah so um when it comes to the songs you know i i guess i should specify i didn't write a single song um you know my drums are uh all me on the record you know what i mean um but bjorn is the mastermind behind the music mm -hmm. and and um you know he sits down, he goes on the computer, and it's very intentional writing. Um, it's not a bunch of uh, demos. Um, I think it's it's the most interesting process of writing I've ever been a part of is um, again, it's very intentional. it's not it's not um, there's not a bunch of throwaway riffs. there's not a bunch of throwaway ideas or songs. It is, he writes a song, we go and record it, it's on the record. Um, and I just think that's an ode to how he is as a songwriter, um, how respectfully narrow his um, influences are and what he listens to. Um, and again, he would admit that like he doesn't listen to a lot of new stuff. He, he, the bank of ideas that he reaches from is very specific and very... Um, it's not very vast in a sense of, um, again, this is all respectful. This is, this is why in flames has <clears throat> sounded like in flames this whole time and why it hasn't been a thrice thing or a bring me the horizon thing or, mm -hmm. uh, or whatever. It, 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 it comes from the most pure in flames place of his brain. And, um, yeah. So again, it's very intentional. He sits down, he writes a song and we go and record it. Oh yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what song took the longest to write and which one is your personal favorite? Um, longest to write. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, again, I, I didn't write it. So, um, I mean, there was one song. What is it? The Great Deceiver. The Great Deceiver wasn't what it was. Um, I think it was the only song on the record to where we went in and we weren't really um agreeing on where it was and within five minutes i re-recorded the entire song 
to create a different energy for it. Whoa. Um, and it turned <clears throat> and it turned into what the second single, um, mm-hmm. which is cool. That's just like how that stuff happens. Um, and what is my favorite song? Mm-hmm. Um, there's a song called Bleeding Out. I think that encompasses the whole record. I think that's a great representation for the whole record. And I love that song. And then um, I love my drumming the most on um, Sinisher. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which is a no, a Sinosure. I don't know how to, I still don't know how to pronounce it. Um, <laughs> that's one of the, again, another track that no one's heard before. Yeah. All right. So oh. what was it about that track that you guys weren't really able to agree on? Um, it, and it, again, it wasn't for me, uh, I'm, I'm less a part of the writing process. So I went in and I did my job and, um, Anders and Bjorn weren't meeting, uh, you know, finding a, a place where they both were happy with it. Um, mm-hmm. it was just, a, I guess it was just a completely different, um, vibe because of what I was playing um and then we we just turned it straight into a punk song um it was mostly double kick and just like classic and flames and we kind of just flipped it and made it um yeah just completely different uh and again like drums can change a whole song Mm -hmm. i'm playing something fast and spastic on a on a song that'll be way different if i'm playing slow and double kicky stuff um so it can really change the shift of energy and yeah that's pretty much all we did we just completely changed the drums and it turned into a different song nice that's crazy um was there like a song in the studio that like you were struggling to like nail on the drums or something or was it all kind of like pretty seamless for you um in all honesty this is definitely the most what's the word um uh, this record was tough physically um i fucking went ape shit you know i'm very much a perfectionist and i uh, i would have been very upset with myself if i didn't put my complete self into this record Mm -hmm. um so there was definitely songs that were very tough um especially because i recorded the record in like three or four days um so I was kind of running out of steam. I was running out of ideas and thankfully with editing and with us coming together and, um, you know, with, with Mike Plotnikoff at the, at the wheel and us having like a good day of editing and trimming the fat, um, it turned into an amazing product. But, um, yeah, there's a song called meet your maker that is very tough. Um, but yeah, the fucking record's intense for sure. Yeah, I'm stoked to hear it. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, so how'd the track list album come about? Did you guys write the opener, be the opener, close, be a closer, shuffle around, see what fits? Uh, what was that process like? Um, that is all Anders. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's it. It's Anders. Anders chooses. Um, and I thought it was a great job. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things within Flames that have far less chefs in the kitchen than maybe other bands or um or whatever and uh it just creates a simpler thing you know i mean like um simpler process like like again anders sent us the track list we listened and it sounds fucking great simple as that you know uh if all all of us were trying to trying to choose what song should go here and there would have taken a lot longer and it would have been a headache. Um, but I'm stoked on how he um, vision a lot stronger than, than we did, you know, especially with the, the lyrics and, and the meanings and just the energy and everything. It, it, I think he did a great job of the track listing. Hell yeah. Sure. Uh, so would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you were creating this record? Um, it was dead. My headspace didn't exist, I guess. Uh, only my physical body existed. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, honestly, I mean, we, we recorded state of slow decay on like a Thursday, let's say mm-hmm. maybe Friday. And then I begged everybody for me to be able to go home for the weekend to practice and try to just 
in a private space and try to just wrap my head around all the songs. And then I recorded, let's say, I don't know, I think Monday through Wednesday, maybe one Monday through Friday of the following week. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I did a lot of songs. So I was burnt out mm -hmm. and it was really difficult to wind down every night. You know what I mean? My mind, um, it was almost like finals week. I don't know if you guys went to school went to college Still am. um mm. i i didn't go to college but I, my girlfriend goes to college so i was i could i could confirm that it just felt like a finals week of just like i was cramming every idea and every inch of my brain to put myself on this you know there's like a pressure mm. that here's these three days and i have to do my job um to the extent of me being satisfied with it um and that will last forever you know mm -hmm. i mean this record this this music will be in time and space forever so yeah. um i didn't necessarily feel that kind of pressure but um there was more just pressure on myself to do such a good job um yeah and it was just intense it's physically and mentally um <clears throat> which yeah it was what it was it's not like i would like prefer to do the whole record over two months and experiment like there's there's something about being thrown um out of a cannon into a situation like this and um you know proving yourself and 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 all of that it creates a different kind of art than it would if i would have taken my time or had the opportunity to take my time um mm -hmm. but again there's something about being thrown out like that that creates a certain vibe and 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 I definitely was um I, I'm very proud of what I did on the record instead of looking back and being like oh I wish I had more time and um again I, I think I um sometimes thrive when I when I'm not given uh comfortability mm -hmm. okay, okay. And how do you kind of deal with that pressure that you you put on yourself for this record um something happens when I warm up um i enter such a space of focus that um pressure kind of disappears and it's just me my drums and and mike plot and so um and i was also lucky that i didn't have anyone with me during the record mm -hmm. so i didn't have a literal band eye on me that was making me feel more pressured it was literally just me and the engineer mm -hmm. um kind of having a good time and kind of just trying to get the best out of every song um so I didn't really feel much pressure because um, I felt pretty confident in my abilities. And um, it only only until like the last day was I feeling like I was running out of ideas. And, um, you know, I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to judging myself and my music. Um, and that's the only thing I felt at some point. I was, I was like, fuck, I, I, I do not know what else. I, don't, I can only have so many drum fills in three days you know um yeah. but again that along with like the editing day that we had like I i'm really proud of what we put out hell yeah Good. uh so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time should i do it in the car with friends in dark with headphones on is a workout album party album what do you personally recommend i personally recommend um taking like seven grams of mushrooms and just mm -hmm. going into the forest and just exploring nature and just losing your mind with it you know what i mean okay. i'm kidding don't do that oh, um, i mean i was about to ask a follow-up question about it. just the car feel free to but um no yeah just go in the car and blast that shit um or seven, I don't know. seven grams of mushrooms However, too. you know music is a yeah exactly i mean music's a, a, a for me like it's like a private thing like um not a private thing, but it's a personal thing. Like, however, however you see fit, you want to sit with your AirPods at the beach. You want to be in your car. You want to be at a house party, whatever you want to do, man. Um, yeah. However you want to listen to it, you, you do that. Just make sure it's not in crappy headphones or a crappy speaker and, you know, mm -hmm. try to listen to it the best way you can. Fair enough. Perfect. Uh, so what this was the follow-up should... question? I was going to ask why seven grams specifically, like is six not enough and is eight too much? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, three is you're pushing it seven. You're on another planet. So of course, yeah, definitely a joke because if, if you take seven, you'll probably take the headphones off after, after two songs. Yeah. <laughs> sure. 
Uh, so this one should be super, super quick off the top of your head. I want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words. No more, no less. Um, aggressive, big, mm-hmm. heavy. It's all like the same type of... <laughs> That's yeah. good. It works though. Yeah, it's good though. Yeah, yeah. It. You know, some some might listen and, and describe it the exact opposite. That's mm-hmm. just how I describe it right now, I guess. Exactly. Fair enough. That's your take. Um, so in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the album? No. And I don't think, you know, they would either. It's, it's, it's a personal journey with it. Um, that's what's cool is like, I don't care if you like it or hate it. I really don't. It's like, um, it's for us first and foremost. It's always going to be like that. Um, be them you know again i didn't write these songs i i I had a part in it but the creation wasn't my hand and um the pureness of in flames you know they they do it for themselves first and foremost um and the rest is in your guys's hands to do whatever you'd like with it Mm -hmm. um so yeah that's it for sure oh yeah great so what is your favorite memory that you made while creating this album <clears throat> um i guess just the whole process of, of of me being able to record like as stressful as it was and as hectic physically mentally as it was like i did have a great time and i i look back at um being in that studio um it was definitely a vibe i it, again i speak on pressure and this that and this but like the energy in that room and the in the in howard benson's studio is like really chill um so it really helps me feel less pressured and it, it kind of created a just a vibe of uh, you know again it kind of just helps everything else i was going through in those three days of not really sleeping and just being really pushed to my limit mentally and physically um being able to be there with mike plotnikoff mike plotnikoff is such a chill relaxed guy and um, the studio is so casual it's not in some huge famous room mm-hmm. in hollywood and mm-hmm. it, it, it's really a relaxed place to be in so um just being there and, and being able to record a whole record of drums for these guys um you know i'll forever remember that awesome mm-hmm. um so since you're currently on tour we have to ask uh what's the snack of choice when you guys are at a gas station <clears throat> I've only been to like three gas stations, let's say, since tour started, and we're like on week five or six. Oh, um, Jesus, we're in a bus, so unless you stop when the driver stops at a truck stop, um, you won't see any mm-hmm. um, gas stations, um, or you won't go to any gas stations. But um, it depends. It depends if I'm high or not. You know what I mean? It depends if I've smoked some of that California. Um, mm-hmm. Could be seeds. Could be one night I got, what was it? Like, it was like chili lime peanuts oh, wow. and so a pickle and some Topo Chico. It really just depends on, the, on the mood, you know? Could be a ding mm-hmm. dong. Mm-hmm. Could be really just depends but i'm also like as as i know the question's casual and fun but like i'm also just trying to like stay healthy out here like there's so much candy and bullshit and burgers and burritos and pizza around us that like i have such an athletic role on tour that like i'm trying to just make sure that i'm healthy and sleeping good and not getting sick and all that absolutely true what was your answer for when you're high? Was that the the nuts or was that the ding dong? Uh, yeah. When I was high that one night, there was like this dude like cussing out this giant man cussing out the lady at the front desk. So I was like all distracted, like, Ooh. oh my god, this is hectic in here. And I grabbed chili lime peanuts, a Topo Chico, and like a bag of hot pickles or something. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I go in there and I have a battle in my mind every time. Like, ooh, that looks good. No, nah, that's horrible for you. Ooh, but <laughs> that looks good. Ah, uh, but that's $14. Uh, and then it's just, that's the game I play in my mind whenever I go into a gas station or a truck stop. Fair enough. 
That's so or I just funny. buy everything. That's, go ahead. That's yeah, a good no, answer. that's always an option. Yeah. yeah. No, it's but, not a good option. No, not at all. I mean, not good for your wallet, but you know, helps if you're indecisive. Yeah. Good. Exactly. Uh, so, on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be, and why? The band as a whole—that's a tough one. Um, it'd probably be a buffet plate, right? Oh. It'd be, or some sort of two-item combo from Panda. It would just be a. It's too specific to just be a steak or it's not specific enough. Just, you know, can't just be a steak or something. So yeah, yeah some sort of a uh, buffet plate of all types of stuff, you know, you know, good. if you guys have heard the songs, it's just, there's a song about Anders son. And then there's a song about the end of the world. And then there's a song about killing yourself. It's like, uh, you know, I actually yeah. don't know if there's any songs about killing yourself, but um, <laughs> take this life. I'm assuming there's something, but uh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot going on. Mm hmm for sure okay. um so for the last couple of questions gonna shift completely away from music and go straight to death row boom so if you're on death row what would your last meal be with drink with drink i i ask people this question all the time <laughs> i've never thought about drink um and i'll probably i'm uh, so many thoughts go through my mind i'm always the one asking this question but never answering it because like it depends on my mood that day mm -hmm. um Good question. Maybe Asian food, but probably like a California burrito. Ooh. So there's in like Southern California where I live, there's a thing called the California burrito. And typically like what you want it to be is carne asada, AKA steak, um, French fries, guacamole, sour cream, and cheese. That is a California burrito and you can get it at any Mexican place down there and there's an infinity Mexican places down there. Um, so I would have that and a horchata, which is like a, yeah. you don't know what it is. It's like a cinnamon rice milk drink. Mm -hmm. That's Horchata's what I have. Bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. I always break it out during Christmas time. It's like a, a thing with my family. It's amazing. Ooh, nice. Instead of eggnog. Yes. Instead of eggnog. Cause eggnog has this like, thick consistency i can never really get past that it's like ugh, it's, it's wrong but um Love that. if you could live in one fictional world for a week where would you live hogwarts oh what house are you um i just got asked really aggressively by drunk girl the other night that and um i haven't been properly sorted <gasps> so i can't say you know what mm -hmm. i mean like as much as this wizard would love to be in or or Hufflepuff, I don't know. Once I hit London, Warner Brothers Studios, or Orlando until I have the proper sorting, I'm just gonna say I don't know for now. Okay. Fair enough. Big question mark. That's yeah. fair. Um, so I have there on my asking the last question, and every single person that we've spoken to have said that is the most important question. What's your favorite color? I'm colorblind, so fuck you, man. Oh, <laughs> shit. Damn uh, no, I am actually colorblind. I don't know, green, like, from, like, an early age, I just started going full goth because it was, like, the only way I could match my clothes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I gravitate to, like, neutral earth tones. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's pretty fucked up that, like, I don't even know because I'm colorblind. And from, like, a even earlier age, they wouldn't let me do art class for some reason, mm -hmm. um, which is garbage. And what? fuck you to whoever teacher. Because I literally remember being taken out of art class in, like, fifth or sixth grade. And they're like, yeah, sorry, whatever. It's fucked like, up. Like, they pulled what? me out of it because I, could, I, I couldn't do the color wheel. Oh, yeah, you were fucking That's it up. So, so they're like, fuck you, get out. Like, what? I've never yeah. even heard of that. That's fucking insane. That's awful. I'm pretty sorry insane. about that. It's okay. I mean, I don't know what I would have done in that. I mean, I would have done art in that class, right? But in terms of the color wheel, I'm fucked. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. Interesting memory, but whatever. I've um, here. I am. You know what I mean? And you're doing fine without my art. Yeah, I asked my girlfriend, "Hey, does this match?" Or I asked my boyfriends on tour, "Hey, does this match?" And we're good. Yeah. Perfect. Hell yeah. Love that. Um, so as I said, that's all the questions we have to say. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Um, 
Dang, dude. Put me on the spot. <laughs> um, Album. Tour. Merch. No. Socials. <laughs> um, what do I want to plug? Mm-hmm. Go track scooters, Xana Rub clothing, and there's a new record coming out February motherfucking 10th called For Gone. And I could be botching a date. Don't really care. Um, and I just want everyone to be kind and treat others like you want to be treated. And meditate more, drink more water. Go uh, be out in the sun more and just be a kinder human because you have no idea what kind of battles that person or that person is going through in their mind. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you for now. That's been Tanner from Inflames, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.